There seems to be a war for your mind. Oh my God. I literally physically did not feel good in my body and I was like, I gotta get out of here as quick as possible. Today, we're gonna talk about the war for your mind that is currently going on. And I wanna tell you a real quick story of kind of how this became something that I was aware of. So uh, the other day, last week, I was in the paint store and I don't watch the news, I don't watch TV, I don't even have you know any TV stations that could come in. Got Netflix and YouTube, that's basically all I watch on my TV in my house. And I was inside of the paint store and I won't tell you what station it was on or any of this stuff, but what it was on was it was on a very popular talk show won't tell you which one it is and it happened to be on a station that the talk show was talking about a lot of things that were very politicized and um, every time we would go to the the commercials the commercials would have a news flash like little break that would happen and it was another thing that was going on right and what I became aware of in this moment obviously I've known it but to be able to actually see it I was in there for about three to four minutes and I was like I wonder what they're actually gonna be talking about and it was so blatantly obvious to me that this station was trying to push their propaganda to make you think and feel a certain way. Now, I'm not saying what station was, any of those things. But what I'll tell you is, no matter what side it is, whether it's the left or the right, whatever it is, they are trying to have a war for your mind by throwing out propaganda and things and making the world seem a lot worse than it actually is. Right. And within three to four minutes of being in there, I became very uncomfortable because I was like, I can literally feel how other people that don't know this is going on can think that the world is absolutely terrible right now. Think that the world is absolutely going to shit to think that there's so much to be afraid of. And I've got to pick a side of what side I'm on. You know, I've got to be on this side. And when I pick a side, this is important to know when I pick a quote unquote side, that puts me on one side, which means that there is always an enemy, which is the other side, right? And it was so obvious that this one side was trying to push their agenda and push their agenda and push their agenda. And to somebody who is not aware of what is going on, they are going to be extremely easily influenced into number one, thinking the way this side thinks. Number two, seeing that there was a side that is against them that they need to be fearful of. And number three, think that this world is going to absolute crap. So there's a couple of things I want to pack out, you know, pull out of that and, and, and unpack. The first thing, why is the news so negative? And I, if I've done episodes on this before in the past. The news is so negative because as a human, our brains naturally go towards what is negative, AKA what is wrong. Why is that important? Because 10, 20, 30, 100,000 years ago, when we focused on what was wrong, we were able to fix it, which then meant that we would stay alive. Because what was wrong 100,000 years ago could mean death if we don't fix it. So now what happens is the news in this media, not even just the news now, it's also just the media, these stations, the, then they disguise them as talk shows, they disguise them as TV stations, they disguise them as all of these different shows that they put out there are out there putting fear and fear and fear and fear and fear into people. And the reason why is because when you're fearful, you're going to watch more because you want to find the solution to this problem. And the more that you watch these stations, the more money that they're going to make off of ad revenue. If you watch them, you're going, they're going to get more ad revenue. The more millions of people that watch their shows, their TV stations, their news stations, their you know talk shows, all of those things, the more people that watch them, well, they're gonna make more money. So that's the first thing. So you've gotta be very clear as to what you're watching and to be very clear, is this something that is supporting me growing into the person that I want to be? Or is this something that's actually holding me back and keeping me in a fearful state? Just simple way to diagnose, just ask yourself this question. What I'm feeling, what I'm watching right now, how does it make me feel, right? If you're watching TV and the news happens to pop up, and you say, how does this make me feel? And you're like, I feel really worried. I feel very fearful. And I don't feel very positive about the direction of the world. Turn it off, like get it off as soon as possible because that's not helping you create the life that you want. That's holding you back. That's keeping you paralyzed. That's immobilizing you versus mobilizing you towards what it is that you want to create, right? So the first thing to be very aware of is that they are putting fear into every person that's out there because it's an easy way to control. The second thing that you have to realize is this, and I'm once again, 
before I go any further, I'm not saying that the world doesn't have problems. The world definitely has problems. And the world will always have some problems in some sort of way. There's 7.5 billion people on this planet. Are there a few bad apples out there? Are there are a few kooky people that are off the rails? Absolutely. There will never be nothing bad. I don't believe that will ever get to that point. What I'm saying is it is seems way worse than it actually is based off of number one, all of the cameras not now exist in the world because everybody's got a camera inside of their pocket. And number two, how it can be pushed over and over and over again through every platform, through the news, through social media, through everything that you could possibly see. So are, are, is the world perfect? No. Will it ever be? No. But it's nowhere near as bad as they make it seem, right? So that's the first thing to, to be very aware of. The second thing as to why would the media, I don't even just say the news anymore. Why would the media, the stuff you see on TV, talk shows, all of these things, why would they put so much negativity and so much fear-based stuff out there? Reason why is because the easiest way to control people is through fear, guilt, and shame. Let me say that again. The easiest way to control somebody is fear, guilt, and shame. Think about what's been going on the past year and how much fear, guilt, and shame has been put out into the media. It is crazy how much has been put out there. Right. And I'm not talking about any side. I don't, I'm not part of any side. Just so you guys know, I don't believe in any specific side. I don't think that there is a side to just go for. But when somebody picks a side, as I said earlier, once you pick a side, you now have a side that you're against, right? If I'm rooting for one basketball team, if I'm watching a game and the Miami heat are playing and I'm a heat fan, they're playing another team, that other team I want to lose. So if I'm on one side, whether that's the left or the right or whatever it is that people believe in at this point, I want the other side to lose. And when I want the other side to lose, I'm losing. And the reason why is because when you can, when, when we're, we're split up and divided, it's the, the phrase that we've all heard, united we stand, divided we fall. If we divide as humans, we are easy to control. We are easy. I don't have a side, right? I don't, I don't have a specific side that's that, that, that I believe in or that I think is right or wrong. I think that there's different sides of both of them, but there's another thing that also is very important as well that people don't take into account is that you're seeing the world through your lens of the world based off of everything that has happened to you in your past, right? You're seeing the world. You think the way that you think. You believe what you believe based off of the way that you were raised and circumstances that were presented to you in your life. Let me say that again. You think the way that you think and you believe what you believe based off of the way that you were raised and circumstances that life presented you with. So someone who doesn't believe the exact same thing that you believe and think the exact same way that you think is because of the way they were raised and the circumstances that life presented them with. So that's very important to realize. Who's to say that if instead of having your life, you had their life, that you wouldn't think exactly the same as them. So what I want you to realize is that we need to stop looking at other people and saying, that's the enemy. I'm different than them. This is my side. That's another side. The only thing that we should be doing at this point is focusing on how we can love the other people. Now, this is really interesting because I put up a video on Instagram talking about this the other day. And most people were in full agreement. Yes, we need to figure out a way to love more, to love more, to love more, because the opposite of love is fear. Think about how much, if I, if I don't like the other side, whatever that side is, it's coming from a place of fear, right? Love is the only thing that's going to get us through all of this, right? There is no other way. Battling and picking sides will not solve our problems. Look at our government. If you're in the United States, all they do is just bicker like a bunch of little children, right? Oh, there's this side, there's this side. They're just battling all they're doing. There's no love at all in all of that, right? Closing off will not solve our problems. There is no other side that you can be on. The only side that you can be on right now or ever is human. You are a human, no matter where you're from, no matter what you look like, no matter what you believe in, no matter any of those stuff, none of those things matter. What you are is you're a human. And everybody else that's on this planet, all 7.5 billion of them are human as well. When we are divided, we are easily conquered. If you look around and you don't see the things in this world that you currently, if there's certain aspects of this world that you don't like, I completely understand that. But fighting is not going to create something better. What's going to create something better? Figuring out a way to love more. 
right? To unite, not to divide. When people are united is when things happen. But when we say that's evil, this person's evil, that side's evil, what happens? We get divided. And when you divide, nothing's going to actually happen. Nothing good is going to ha actually happen. Look at, look, at, look at the past hundred years of how much division has happened the past hundred, two hundred years, right? Does it look like it's going in the right direction? Well, probably not. If you watch the news, it looks like it's going in the wrong direction really fast, actually, right? But anything that you've tried to do in the past and, and put somebody into a box, and, and anything that's happened that's put somebody into a box of this is what you believe, this is what I believe, this is what they believe, divides people. And when you are divided, you are easily conquered. So what we need to do is figure out a way to love more. Let me give you an example of what I mean. As I said a few minutes ago, people believe what they believe and they think what they think based off of what has happened to them in their past, what life has brought to them, and what they were taught, right? So I might look at somebody and say, you know what, I don't necessarily believe the exact same things that they believe. But does that mean I can't love them or find some sort of love for them? It might be hard sometimes, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. It means it's something that we got to work towards, right? So you look and you've heard the phrase, love your neighbor, right? Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. When we're divided, nothing's gonna happen that's gonna be, in, gonna be good. But when we unite and we can work through our problems, we can work through things that are going on, that's when things actually, that's when things actually start to change, right? So if I look at somebody and I say, okay, this person, I don't agree with much of what they said. Actually, I don't agree with most of what they say, but I didn't have their life. I didn't have them circ their circumstances. I didn't have any of the things that they had. So if I was in their exact same shoes and I went through the exact same life that they had, would I think the same as them? And there's a possibility that I would, which means that how can I say I'm better than them and that my opinion and my, my stance is better than them? I can look at them and I can say, you know what? I don't agree with them, not 100%. There's some things that we definitely on other sides, but I can love them either way. Why can I love them? Because number one, I'm an empathetic person. We all have empathy and we can always be empathetic towards other people and what they've been through in their lives, right? Number two, if I want things to actually change, I need to be able to look at someone who doesn't agree the same things as me and say, I can still love them through this. I can figure out a way to, to, for us to work together. That's the only way that this is going to work. And I could say, okay, if I go, come from a place of love when I go and speak to this person, they're more receptive to listening to me and to listening to my side. If I go from a place of hate and a place of anger, they are way less likely to listen to me. And what are they going to do? They're going to build up their walls and they're going to push their side further. So if we really want to have an intelligent, intellectual, you know, adult conversation, maybe I should come from a place of love first and not a place from division and hatred towards them come from a place of love and that would make them more receptive to actually listening to what it is that I have to say. Maybe that's a way that we can actually get them to change. Because if what they've been taught and what they what life has presented them with, what if I come from a place of love and present them with a different option and present them with something different? Maybe then that would change them in some sort. Maybe it wouldn't. But in reality, I know that if we come from a place of love and everything that we do, life is going to be a lot better. And that's the thing that the world is missing. So what I want you to realize is that right now, there seems to be a war for your mind. You're in control of all of the things that you watch, all of the things that you listen to, all of the people that you hang out with, the music that you listen to, the media that you consume, whether that's visually, auditorily, the people that you hang out with, you know, you're in control of all of those things and all of those things brainwash you in some sort of way. The question is, is it brainwashing you to become the person that you want to become? Or is it brainwashing you to hold you back and not get you to move forward, right? All I know is that when I walked into that paint store and I saw those three to four minutes, I was like, oh my God. I literally physically did not feel good in my body. And I was like, I gotta get out of here as quick as possible. Because number one, I could see what it was doing to me. And number two, I could see what it's doing to other people who aren't necessarily paying attention and who don't have this knowledge as well. So just be, number one, come from a place of love. Be very loving in everything that you do. And number two, realize you're in control of the information that comes into your head. Be in control of it. Be very diligent about what you allow to come into your head. Number three, look at everyone else around you and realize that if I pick a side and if I become divisive, we're easily conquered. 
the only way that we're going to change this world into becoming the world that we want to be is we have to first become that change. If we want people to get along more than they're getting along now, we need to first be the people who start getting along with people. If we want people, people to be more loving, we need to first be the people that are more loving. Gandhi said it, still makes sense. Be the change you want to see in the world. What do you need to do and change within yourself to be the change that you want to see in the world? What change do you want to see in the world and how can you take that and put it inside of you? There's a war for your mind going on. Be in control of what's actually coming into your head. Be in control of every thought that you think, every action that you take, and come from a place of love in every single thing that you do. And I promise you, that'll be the first step towards a better world. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Typically, the people who follow me tend to be more optimistic versus pessimistic. 78% of the people who follow me think that the world is Yeah, I was super surprised by that.